Come on in, everyone. Woo! Wow. Whoa, that's like... Heavy. What is this made of? It's cold like stone. It's just like... So, uh... We were just gifted something here. Um, Kirk, come on up here, please. It's just, it's super delicate and then like, and it's heavy. So, uh, well, I know, but here's the snake from my dream. Even I said the colors on it. So um, just as we get going this morning, speaking your love language. So, um, <laughs> So this was gifted to Patricia King back in the day. And um, Patricia King started the war room. And uh, a fact I did not know until this morning. Interesting, because I sent her a picture of me and you. I said, Patricia, uh, we're in the war room. And just like, um, I sent from, I'm all, hey, someone's got to document this stuff. Anyway, so, and of course, um, when we did a poster for this event, and by the way, this event was planned months ago, way before we figured we were coming into here. The timing of it maybe wasn't the best. Three weeks after we get into this building and it all needed to be painted and cleaned. Um, so, but we, we, regardless, we, 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 we went for it. And I seen in a vision, you know, um, an eagle bringing a snake and feeding it to another eagle. And, and so um, uh, this, this is now gifted to us. <laughs> uh, Patricia gifted it to Karen Stewart. And Karen's like, you guys are opening the war room again? Here you go. So it's returning. Um, yeah. <laughs> but some, just quickly before we get into worship, I had a dream last Sunday morning in the wee hours. In my dream... Um, in my dream, we were outside in a yard of a large building, and there was a big roof coming off of the building like there was like a, like a lean-to outside, but it was foundational. There was two massive posts like these, like these on the outside of the building in my dream, and the grass was all torn up and it was muddy, but someone had dug down in a hole, down a hole, and exposed the foundation of the two posts, and I went and looked. I used to build foundations, and I looked, and I'm like, the foundations are good. I'm like, in my dream, oh, the foundation's good of this house. But there was like some little holes in the dirt, and out came a snake looking like this, these colors. And out came a snake, and I'm like, oh, uh, a, a python. Just like, I went to the other hole, foundation's good, but there was a, a viper, like a king cobra. And uh, so, Needless, long story short, grabbed a big fishing rod, Wesley, yeah, triple, triple prong hook, barbed. I hooked him, came out, but he, he freaked out, so I grabbed him, I disemboweled him with my hand, a dream, just a dream. And I went over to the other one, I didn't need a fishing rod, the king cobra came out at me, and I grabbed it really quickly before it bit me and wanted to bite my hand, I'm like, I, I, I don't have a knife. How am I going to kill it? And I felt a supernatural strength just come and squeeze the life out of this King Cobra. Anyway, this is a prophetic picture of just the snakes, the spirits who just ward. I'm not saying they're not going to try to come back. And all of us really have to be on guard in the days to come, not to partner with the accuser, right? But um, anyway, so thank you, Karen. We receive that you know, for the war room, and we just declare the war room is open once again. Praise the Lord. Good job. <laughs> In fact, last night, I dreamt that the first, as I was waking up this morning, I was, in a, I was in a house, and a little boy named Joab, so I followed him. That's my third-born son. And, uh, but it wasn't him. 
But it was this strange house with a woman with many children, many children, and a grandfather over here and this and that. And the next thing I knew, there was a snake. We killed it. And then there was a, then there was a scorpion, and we killed it. Then there was a tarantula on the wall, and the tarantula could spit venom at least 30, 40, 30 feet, and it would explode. And then I said, we better look for more. Open the door of a closet. There was another one. And then I, in the corner of the closet was something like unto, as large as a lobster, but it was a scorpion lobster, and it was aggressive. And we had to get tools and killed that. Then I woke up, so. Clean the house. That was this is, Listen, I've been having dreams of killing grizzlies, alligators, oh, yeah. rabid, demonic pigs, dreams. <laughs> anyway, this... To the ones, you know who you are, that the intercessors helped us get us here and they're going to help us go forward. Thank you. And this will be up in there as a reminder. God has given us authority over the, every poison, demonic, snake or whatever. So thank you. We'll just throw it here. So come on, let's stand up on our feet this morning. We have a treat here, um, here on the West Coast. We've got Stephanie Israel's son uh, from the East Coast, New Brunswick. And um, Kirk said, hey, did you know that Stephanie's coming? Like, D don't take this wrong way. I'm like, why? Why? Coming from the East Coast. She goes, oh, she doesn't want to miss this. I'm like, would she maybe, you know, get up there and do some? So, so, um, we just welcome the live stream and say hello, good, good morning, and uh, we just pray for uh, uh, an, uh, an awakening spirit to be in all of us today. Let's give Jesus some praise, and uh, we got a great morning ahead. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come again, Holy Ghost. Come again, Holy Ghost, here this morning. Amen. Let's just lift up our hands in this place this morning. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome the presence of the Lord. Won't you tell him that this morning? We welcome the presence of the Lord in this place. Jesus, Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome your presence, God. Hallelujah. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us.
Just speak in tongues for a few moments. Oh, let's just release the river in this place.
Ustacho, Ustacho, Shnon, Yanendo. This song is called Rise Up Canada, and oh, it was a little over a year ago, Fateen asked me if I had a, a song for Canada, and within, really within hours, the Lord just kind of birthed this song, and I believe it's the, the heart of the Spirit for this nation, His heart for the move of His Spirit and His presence. So just sing it with me. It might be new to some of you. Fire, fire, burning, burning, taking over all across this land. Holy Ghost, fire, hearts are yearning with fresh anointing flowing through. So let's sing it again. Fire, 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 burning, burning, taking over all across this land. Holy Ghost, fire, hearts are yearning with fresh anointing flowing through this land. Rise up, rise up, rise up, oh Canada, Woo. rise up, oh. rise up, rise up, oh Canada, oh now. dominion and authority Woo! from sea to sea we will see the glory oh! over every province and the territories oh lord we prophesy rise up oh! he shall he shall have dominion and authority
just lift him high, lift him high.
Just can we go back on that song? I know you had something planned just for the end of a different song. Can you just go back to that chorus? Can we just, just, I feel there's, we just need to, together, just let's praise him with this. Let's just, can you go back? Let, let's drive right into you guys. Let's give a crescendo here at the end where we uh, switch gears. Let's just give it, give him the praise he's worthy of. Let's enter into his courts here.
Jesus, welcome home. <laughs> welcome home. believe we're in the days of the restoration of many things in the kingdom. Many things. One of them being the restoration of the mantle of praise. You know, when Jesus was hit by the Holy Ghost and walked into the temple and unscrolled Isaiah 61, in there says the Spirit the Ruha, the Ruach is upon me. And in it it says, I will give him a garment of praise instead of the spirit of mourning. And I looked at the original language, that word is mantle. It's a mantle that comes from God. It's like it's a, a grace, an ability. And Father, this morning we pray for Whatever does happen in this house, the, the mantle of praise that exalts you, lifts you high, that creates a door for you to come. It would be in this house, far from this place. Many people received a mantle of praise in this house. They had to open up and go get it at times. would come and visit for places where they were allowed to do certain things here that they were allowed to do in other places as far as their praise. And indeed received the mantle. Again, thank you Lord for what you did but also what you're going to do. One of the seven Hebrew words for praise means actually to thank the Lord with the extended hand for what he has not yet done. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> We're just, as we do this, I need... And as Mark brings the word, I need four men, fairly strong guys. Well, they're, they're not big. They're, you don't have to be that strong. But I need two of the red couches that are in the coffee shop to come and be brought up here. These chairs are dead. I'm just like, um, we're, we're going to do a panel. So I need four guys. They're going. And uh, Mark. Yeah, just quickly. This moment that we're in, this is, this is important, guys. Try not to be distracted. We're not, we're not quite done. Come on. This moment that we touched on is either a destination or a transition point. When, we, when, when we're worshiping, we're actually ascending into a place. And when we sing a song like that, the song accompanies our ascension. 
The song is not the objective. It's the musical background for the action that's happening in the room. But here's the thing. When you hit this kind of transition point, for most of us, it has become a turnaround point. It has become the final leg, the, the resting place. That's where, this is the place where we want ministry, we want a word, we want hands laid on it. And you know what? We could do that. I mean, it is a great place. It is the place where the presence of God breaks out. But listen, to, to keep an apostolic center, you have to press past this. Ministry to us is a stage to prepare us to go higher. And if, we, if we make ministry to us the destination, we miss the preparation that will enable us to go into governmental levels. And for, for an, a, an eagle's nest to exist and to be sustained, we need more than the ministry elements that help us in our journey and how we get out there. We need preparation. I mean, Moses himself was called up the mountain. He, he went beyond the elders. He went to a place with Joshua. Joshua stayed there. He went higher, and he had to wait seven days before the Lord said, now come up. What is happening in those seven days? These are transition points that prepare us for something higher. And so let's get out of the ministry model where I need a word, I need encouragement. He needs something, and he's preparing a people to release the government of heaven on earth. That's what's next. That's what we have to move into. Amen. All right. Wow. We could just keep going by keeping this open. I know it's it's like, um, and there's going to be there's going to be days of this in the coming days. We don't even know all that it's going to look like, but um, but uh, we felt it was important for all of the prayer warriors, the firewall, and all the from east to west who've been praying for this, and they just were like a dog on a bone, and the, someone was. But what is this? <laughs> we'll get it, but and we got it, but what, what is this? So um, we're so honored to have the founders of New Life Church um, and the, and, and the uh, pit bull, Wesley Campbell, who went after this place and got this place. For him to see this and even restoration, um, is 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 incredible. So you guys are going to be absolutely blessed, I believe, with the story that just comes out. We're asking the Holy Ghost to lead. Last night leading worship, though, I was like, I was so wow and blessed when I opened my eyes and I seen Stacy Campbell come up and dance across the stage. Like, did that just happen? such a blessing and um, such a blessing to have really my spiritual our spiritual parents in the house for this whole weekend they've changed their schedule da 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 did what they could so um, we're going to you know you're going to hear a little bit about the history and the war and uh, some of the sons that came along after two of them being um, Brent Borthwick and myself so I just want to call to the stage right now Wesley and Stacy Campbell you guys Take the couch that you want. And Brent Borthwick, come on up here. Come on up. And uh, a very special moderator here this morning, Brother Briggs. Come on. <laughs> yeah.
チクチクダビデは。アーツは、We know that something's happening, but what is this? <clears throat> so, this morning we're going to try and help make that happen, but I first want to say thank you. Thank you, Art. Art Lucier. Just wait. Art and Heather. Amazing. Let's give it up for them. Ha 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 ha! It's good. It's good that he called me a pit bull today because he's another one just like it. And so here we are in the city of Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. The date today is what? March 22. March 22. And、uh, 2024, exactly 30 years ago this month, 30 years ago, I had a long black mullet. I was not a bald eagle. <clears throat> And we dedicated these facilities to the Lord in a very dramatic way with well over a thousand or more people, balloons,、uh, the nations. And that was 30 years ago this month. <clears throat> And it happened to be on my birthday. On my birthday. And so it's with great delight that.、Uh, We just want to welcome you all. We welcome the nations. We welcome you on this、uh, live stream, which will then go out everywhere. So take it away. Well, this is a, a real privilege for me. I'm, I'm going to talk very little. I want these guys to talk the most, but it's a privilege for me to be able to host this because when I planted and pastored a church, I was a young man in my late 20s. When I got this bootlegged CD, <laughs> yeah, of, of this crazy woman. <laughs> Just talking about eyes and wings. And it wrecked me. I, I, I preached on it, I still preach on it. I didn't know who Wesley and Stacy were at the time. I just got rocked by this idea that. We as human beings could participate in the heavenly vision that occupies the center of the universe around the throne to be given eyes and wings to see more and more. Blasted me.、And、years later, we met in Kansas City and gotten to know them over the years, gotten to know Art over the years, and, and Brent. And,、uh, so it, it's a treat for me to just be able to sit up here and Ask little questions and hear these stories, but I actually think that that connecting point for me of eyes and wings, Stacy mentioned last night, the stories you're about to hear are like memorial stones. Every story is a memorial stone. And you can't know where this place is going if you don't know where it's been, because that's how you form a trajectory. Two points, and that tells you where you're going. But I also think it's, it's a prophetic moment because it was so common in the Old Testament when the Spirit would show a picture, He would ask the prophet, What do you see? And so here we are, and here we are, and we need a reckoning. What is it that we're seeing? What is this moment in the Spirit with all these years of history, 30 years, 40 years of history? What do you see? What do you see? And so、um, we're going to talk about the, 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 the early past. 
some of the investment and cost and sacrifice, the battles, the loss of vision and hope, and, and now in this moment of restoration, we want to ask the Lord, what is it that we should see at every stage of the way so that we can know what this moment is about to get the trajectory of not just what has been, but what must be to come? Amen? So God, we just ask for a, uh, we just set aside this, these next few moments of conversation. Uh, let us be a part of that ancient tradition of building the memorial to you in the spirit, not to simply celebrate the past, but to remember the past so that we can uh, participate with you in building the future. God, we honor Wesley and Stacy yeah. as mothers and fathers, yeah. as those who have paid a price and bear the scars. We fully welcome them back into this place. Uh, uh, it's, it's still theirs in the spirit. It's an inheritance that is unyielding in your heart for them. We acknowledge that. And we also acknowledge the, the roll down of the generations through the faithful sons who now take up that mantle. And so we honor and bless Art and Heather and, and those who have fought for that inheritance. And God, we just say, be glorified in this entire conversation. Strengthen the body of Christ here in Kelowna and across Canada, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, Wesley, I'm going to start with you, because it really starts with you. It was your father that built this place. Ah, okay, I just want to go a little further back to, I, I want to lay a foundation of truth, because the very beginnings actually matter. And from the beginning, the devil has said, well, has God said? And try to question uh, uh, God's purposes. So I want to set a foundation of truth that uh, from the prophetic word that the very first missionary who ever came to New Life from Colombia, uh, from Bogota, Colombia, said that he heard the angels talking about this place. And he heard, he, in the spirit, he saw two angels and he heard them speaking. And one angel said to the other, is this the place? And the other answered and said, this is the place. So first and foremost, this is not about, this is about God's choice. And, and like the whole biblical history from, from Abraham, God chose a land and a place to actually build a people that were going to do his will. This is such a biblical concept. It is not rooted in man or the idea of man. I, I need to see that, babe. And, uh, and so before we got into this building, we were all in our 20s. And I want to say, uh, can you, I want to say that the prophetic history of this place is we didn't want this building. This building, though it was Wesley's land, it had you know, controversy in the city. And we were young. It was way bigger than us. We were in our 20s. We could not have attained this building. But God himself kept prophesying to every single prophet in the nation about this building. This was not from the eyes of man. This has no faulty foundations. This is foundations from the Spirit of God you know, that he himself laid, and, uh, and we could obey it or disobey it. And, and this is one of the early prophetic words before we got into this building, um, that in 19, May 1993, six months before we got into the building, and, and this is what the Lord spoke. He said, through me, I feel that the Lord is raising a people who will walk by faith. Much blowing. And actually, on Eyes and Wings, people say, what's that sound? What's that instrument? Like, I've had musicians, I said, oh, that's my head, uh, you know. So anyway, and the Lord, uh, actually, no, I can't, it's better for me to sit. Okay, yes, okay. And the Lord would like to bring an end to the era of people who would walk only by the reasoning of their minds. 
My just one lives by faith. And most people live by safe. They want to dumb down the purposes of God to something reasonable instead of faith in a divine God, uh, the most high God. Uh, and he said, for that is what he called us to do, to be an example of faith, quote, who in hope believe against hope in the God of our salvation. That's a quote of scripture. That is why God gave us a specific place and specific plans. He will not leave us just to use our minds and our gifts and our talents, but it goes beyond our minds and our gifts and our talents. And he says, the just shall live by faith. And the Lord would say, before we got this building that had holy intentions from God for hundreds of years, okay, just repeating that, that he would uh, use Main Street as the deposit, guaranteeing the promise of all that he has promised to our church, that when you stand in Main Street, when you worship in Main Street, and when you as a, come as a church to Main Street, that this building would be a deposit guaranteeing the things that he has promised to this body as a church. We will go to many nations of the world in the fullness of his promises. That has already happened. I feel that in the whole prophetic history of our church, our church was definitely birthed, birthed through prophecy with many words from the Lord, that Main Street is integral in being a deposit guaranteeing an inheritance of all that the Lord would want for our church. And as a prophetic person, very loud and strong. I am not ashamed to say that I believe with, all, with my whole heart that the Lord's plan for our church is Main Street, this building and none other. And so that's the early prophetic history. There's many more. But prior to that, you know, 200 years before the Lord chose this place, uh, I mean, Father Pandozi came here. I was just reading about him, you know, in Kelowna and said this, that uh, about building it in 1858, he landed in Canada, 1859, he landed, it landed here, and he said this, this was not built, uh, this site was not established for fur or gold, but rather as a religious site and a community settlement. It was established, the entire city is based on mission, apostolic prophetic mission. Okay, the whole city is based on that. And before that, 200 years before that, the angels were talking. And I have to say that um, Al Arthur, uh, Ar Arnold, I mean, I used to go out on the streets with Arnold, who was beating the drums last night and did protocol here. I used to go out on the streets with Arnold in decades past, you know, taking prophetic teams out to prophesy and evangelize with Arnold, who's always done apostolic mission. The first peoples have done apostolic mission. This, this whole city was founded on that. And if we forget the foundation, you can't build a building when you forget the foundation. And that when you forget the foundation or try to replace the foundation with a false narrative or a different narrative, you actually, it cannot build. It, it will crumble. It will fall. It cannot sustain itself. And so I just want to honor Heather and um, uh, Art because they believe the word of the Lord. This goes beyond the mind of man. This is actually by faith believing in what God himself has said, and we want to stand 100% with the next phase yeah. of building on the foundation, the holy foundations, and I just want to repudiate any lie that has gone out in the spirit that there are not holy foundations. This has holy foundations from heaven prophesied by God for hundreds of years, and God himself chose it. And all we are doing is obeying what he has said. It's like Abraham. God sent him out to a place to establish a people and a foundation and a nation built on faith. And this is, this is what the Bible is all about from the beginning to the end. And people who will live by reasoning of man will dumb down the Bible will dumb down their actual life of faith, and we have to get back to what God himself has said, first and foremost in his word, and then in his choices, 
You know, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And, and see how from the beginning of the church, it was birthed in prophecy. Acts 2 is all about prophecy. This it was, is what Joel was talking about. Old men will dream dreams. Young men will have this Pentecost, the birth of the church, is about prophecy. And in the last days, it's going to be about prophecy, about a people that follow the word of the Lord and actually obey it. And when you shift out of obedience, if we love him, the Bible says, we keep his commandments. The Logos and the Rhema, we obey what his word says. Hallelujah. As an ancient pagan philosopher once said, my, what women these Christians have. <laughs> Christian History Magazine. Okay, I will start, and uh, this is unrehearsed, unplanned. It, you know, the wind blows where it listeth, and you don't know where it comes from, and you don't know where it's going, so we'll... Yeah, David Ruse's song. So we're going to take off. I'm going to bring you back down to earth a tiny bit. <clears throat> I was born in 1958, 100 years after Father Van Dozy came to this very place, <clears throat> uh, landed in Canada. And uh, my father, <clears throat> we lived in Vernon, but we were this whole valley. He had a main business center here. And so in 1967, we'd already had a fruit stand market in this place he bought this land from a Christian family eventually their grandchildren ended up in our church and uh, he built a fruit market which became the largest fruit stand market in Canada okay the largest notice the metaphor fruit export market people would come from everywhere harvest. the harvest, the harvest. <laughs> So um, I remember he had built the building and he said, son, I want to come see the land. I didn't even know what that meant, 1967, grade three. And uh, so he says, jump in the truck. So we drive from Vernon to here. And I mean, this <clears throat> orchard park was a cornfield that was a Chinese farmer called Mr. Jack Lowe who gave us corn, sold us corn. <clears throat> so he drives into this lot. And there's this one stark building built. And he says, son, one day this will all be yours. Now pick rocks. Because we have to make a, a, paved dri a, a tar and gravel driveway. So I started picking up rocks and putting them in the back of the truck. I was grade three. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> we worked there. I worked there for years. I eventually got saved. And uh, we started leading it. We had a French revival. Danielle Germain, who you're going to see this weekend, was one of the French transients, came to the city park. There's 20 of them. Stacy was learning French and German uh, in, in university to be an uh, interpreter of international affairs. So we'd go to the park, and I would preach, and she would translate into French. And eventually we had 20, 30 French Canadians all getting saved. Then they didn't have anywhere to go. <clears throat> so they stayed at our little apartment in Coronation Village. I mean, they had knives that were that long. And <clears throat> the fruit market would supply all the food to feed. I just brought boxes and boxes and boxes of seconds, we called them. It was fruit. It was vegetables. It was this. It was that. Make massive salads. It's the days of Keith Green. Jesus commands you to go, you know, just party with Jesus. And uh, it was awesome. <clears throat> And so um, we, des we decided we we're going to take a trip around the world, 18 countries in six months when we finished Bible college, what? To see where we would go in missions, because we were missionaries. We wanted to, you know, Jesus commands us to go unholy land missions, go to hell. Just go into the depths of hell, touch, feel, smell the dirt, and get a vision. So we did that. We went all through Asia, everywhere. Partway through, we said, you know what? <clears throat> Calcutta. I, I said, <clears throat> I've only got three gifts. One is my mouth. The other is my mouth. And the third is my mouth. <clears throat> I'm really not good for anything. I can't build a birdhouse, a coop, or a chicken. I can't do anything. <clears throat> All I know how to do is talk. And so 
I said, if I become a missionary and I get, I learned 10 years, five years to learn the language, it'll take me so long. And then there's a coup and they throw us all out. I got to go to the next one. I said, Stacy, let's go back to Canada and start a missions based church. <clears throat> mission sending church. So we went up on the top of a, of a Singapore apartment building. <clears throat> Why well? We got out the paper with Bob Young and Ruth, elders here, best friends. We wrote the vision. A church of a thousand in 10 years in a facility fully paid to send out 100 missionaries to 100 cities of the earth. That was the mission statement. On a Singapore roof, you know, in 1985. <clears throat> so we came back with a determination and uh, we planted our church, and next thing we knew, you know, John Wimber was moving in the gifts and, you know, the excitement of the Holy Spirit. And we were just like, we were like that dog chasing after, uh, you know, a truck. If you ever catch it, what are you going to do with it? So, God, come, send your healing power. <laughs> Nothing worked at all. Everybody we prayed for got sicker, half them died, <clears throat> and... Uh, so we just, we didn't know what to do. And the first outbreak was Stacy, but I'll, I'll just skip that. That was September. She shook violently, but we didn't know what was happening. I said, whoa, what happened to you? But um, <clears throat> so, because we'd never seen this. And then December, the Christmas party, uh, uh, the famous Christmas party, 18 of us all full-blown, you know, Kara's Baptist, really, pen, brethren, theological seminary professor, Roger Hill and everything, so we're praying, we're playing, and uh, Roger says, I think we should pray. I said, oh, no, not that again. Because I was raised in the brethren, and they would pray all the way, like, right through the new year, and this would go on boring forever. <clears throat> so I'm going, oh, like, guys, we've been, we've been hammering this for months. Let's just have a party. No, 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 no. We, we got to thank God for the year. I said, oh, brother. So we're on the couch. We're on the couch. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, Stacy, and she arches. And I, whoosh, I, hear, I feel this wind. Wind like angels. I'm going, what is And I look at her, and she's just shaking violently right next to me. And then she's up on the top of the couch like this with her feet here. And she's against the wall. And <clears throat> suddenly, she's throwing and propelled into the center of the room. The next thing I knew, David Roos just jumps and he, he becomes like a jackhammer. He's just violently, I'm not talking about shaking. I'm talking about as violent body gestations as one can possibly imagine. And he's so hard, he's shaking his wedding ring, goes boom like this. His watch comes right off his wrist and gets into the couch. <clears throat> now that thing, got hit, that thing got lost and every night at about midnight, it would go off in Gord White's house. And they go, what's that sound? And never found it. It was just, then by the time they'd look for it, the, the, the alarm was gone. <clears throat> so he jackhammered across the room from way over there, the, back and forth, like this, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm going, huh? And now the guys from the exclusive brethren were so scared but they couldn't get to the door because these guys were between them and the door to get out. <clears throat> then Blake Waters, this big elder, and it's like the fist of God hit him, bang, on the head. He came shooting out of the couch, and he was just with his elbows like this, and he's just screaming in tongues like a turkey gobbler. And now the three of them are all in the center of the room. Now these are, these are into, <laughs> she's an intellectual person. I've actually written a whole book on how prophets move in the Old and New Testament called ecstatic prophecy to give you a thoroughly biblical foundation for all of that. Yeah, so you can read it in the Bible. <clears throat> so <clears throat> now it's like the power of God hits them. There's one big burst of power. Boom! All three of them go jumping up in the air <clears throat> like elongated Holy Spirit high jumpers. Their feet is up. They land on their backs, and now they're thrashing on the ground. And we're, ah! Now, this goes on for five hours. Five hours. Once, <clears throat> Stacy said, 
I got to go to the bathroom. I said, okay, I'll take you. And I said, how are your wrists? Because they would shake so violently. I said, how are your wrists? You need tensor bandages. I mean, this is actually true. She says, no, they don't hurt. How about your neck? She says, okay. So she goes into the bathroom, closes the door. I wait. And I wait. I'm still waiting. <laughs> Stacy, are you done? Yeah, open the door. I said, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? What's happened to you? What's it feel like? Like, I, was, I don't know. I think it's gone. I said, good, good, good. Don't do that again. <clears throat> She says, I said, let's go home. She says, okay. I think it's gone. She crossed the threshold of the bathroom. <laughs> like a top, back in the living room, back on the floor, two more hours. <clears throat> At 2.30 in the morning, the stars are still brightly shining. It's still the year of our dear Savior's birth. And I remember driving down 97 and says, I'll never eat another Big Mac again. I've been to the holy mountain. How can I profane my body with an unholy thing? I thought, like, <clears throat> life is different from this point on. And it was. And it was. We get home. I turn on all the lights of the house. We had no real walls. It was a four story. I turn on every light. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm alone with her. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to go to bed. And she says, well, we better just give thanks for the night. I said, no, no more thanks for no more nights. Get into bed. And then I start feeling like I'm at sea because it's a water bed. <laughs> Go to sleep. Three in the morning, we get to sleep. We go, what was that? We have Christmas. Candy, apples, and... Christmas balls and all the rest of it. <clears throat> so uh, kind of don't know what to do. And so we said, well, maybe we should have another prayer meeting. It's January 5th. We all gather in the same place. Boom! Same thing erupts, seven hours, seven hours. And that's when the manifestations began to be interpreted. 19, 1988 and... Uh, um, you know, we would, we would literally ask dialogue questions to God. God, do you? Da, and all of a sudden, boom, someone would stand up and they would start thundering out these words. And so, of course, we loved it, but it was so scary because we'd never heard or seen of this in, in our life, in the world. And I was an avid scholar and I'd never found this <clears throat> in any books. I never saw this anywhere. So we thought we were the only ones on earth. This is seven years before Toronto. So we thought, oh. So uh, this led us, in that, that's what you referred to the other night. We went eight months uh, straight, about, no, yes, it was eight months, about 40 to 50 hours per week, per week, for eight months in prophetic meetings, prophesying everything, and that's when the prophecy came. And, and you know, the, the thing is, according to the Bible, he, the correlation between go wait till you receive power. And they waited for 10 days. And then the spirit fell and they were filled with the Holy Spirit physically. They looked, it, you could observe it physically. 
And while it's going on in the New Testament, at the birth of the church, it says, but some mocked. It's possible to mock a move of the Holy Spirit, but the byproduct is that when he pours out the Spirit on all flesh and they begin to prophesy, the byproduct of the apostolic prophetic foundations is that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And 3,000 were saved in a day at the birth of the church. But in our little Baptist church, we started with 35 people. You know, then we had maybe 100 or two. But we became the fastest growing Baptist church in the nation of Canada, of regular Baptists, uh, because of this power from the Holy Spirit. The purpose of it is harvest. That's the purpose of it. And so when you deny the foundation, you just get, you don't get as much harvest. And, and, and it's very important to understand from the Bible how this works. And, and, we, and we were the fastest growing Baptist church until the Baptists wouldn't let us be Baptist anymore because they found out we also spoke in tongues. And so then we became a vineyard. And so, yeah. So I'll make this part as fast as I can because we'll come up to more contemporary times. So uh, Fe about February 8th, 88, the, David Roos and I met to be a pastor's meeting in our house. And all of a sudden, he began to violently shake so hard he broke the chair. <clears throat> and um, he stood up and thundered and back and forth and back and forth. You must call Anita, his wife, and you must pray and fast. For today I will tell you many things. And this will be a day that will be remembered for many, 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 many years. And so we called Anita and we started to pray. We started to fast. There was uh, two couples. There was about uh, 10 or 11 in the morning. And by 4 o'clock that afternoon, we were in the other part, portion and we began to pray about facility. Why? Because we had three services. And we were hundreds and hundreds of people. We were baptizing numbers of like 50 at a time, 60 at a time, even 75 people at a time on a Sunday morning, uh, just on and on, <clears throat> in a hot tub, in a sm small little place. And people were, you know, Greg Semenek was there. You know, he, he, he got recommitted there like in the first time of the exposure of the Spirit. So the Lord thundered out. The building I have for you is the Main Street Public Market. Now, what you need to know, this was, um, my father died in, um, you know, 84 or so. So my cousin took over the management of the facility, of things. And my father was actually quite a businessman and quite wealthy. And so, um, but that was a downturn of economy. So Glenn, my brother, my cousin, like a brother, had the idea of rebuilding this building as a, public market, the marketplace, with the fruit stand right under those, that, that part right over there, Stacy would be a cashier, right over there, and uh, <clears throat> so, and there was going to have a, another hundred businesses in it, down below and above, food market, etc. Anyway, that had a disastrous situation, and um, <clears throat> eventually it went uh, into receivership, and it was lost from a family, and uh, that was it. So the building, and also one of the uh, pastors had a carpet business, and he ended up losing like $100,000 in his materials. So it wasn't a good time. It was a bad taste. And Glenn was in my church. So uh, it was a bad taste. So when <clears throat> we began after receivership, this word came, no one wanted to hear that. The other pastors didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear it. And so <clears throat> it started to be this thing, and finally the Lord said, okay, have prayer meetings, take it. And, and, and everyone around began to prophesy this building. Everybody was prophesying this building, even from across the nation. And no one would tell each other. We were like, we were bound, you can't speak, you can't say, you can't tell, you know. And then we would be in this little room, and um, <laughs> David Ruth says, Cord White, what did you dream last night? And he goes, oh, I dreamt of a great big barn with a red roof and with columns on the side, and there was this and that. And he goes, David goes, goes he goes, he go, Gord says, I think that was Main Street. Yes, yes, it is Main Street. Main Street is the building that I have for you. <clears throat> and so she, and then all of a sudden, David Roos, you know, he just like this, and we're in this tiny little office space, and so right next to us is an insurance company. <clears throat> And we're in this prayer room, and it called it the blue room. <clears throat> and he goes, I want you to take that chicken down and put up a cross. Now, there was a chicken weather vane, which is the sign, a rooster, on top of this building. And the rooster is the sign of denial, Peter, unbelief. And the church 
put the rooster on churches to say, do not be like Peter in denial and unbelief. I want to take that chicken down and put up a cross. And he thunders it out. And all of a sudden, there's a, on the other side of the wall, there's a bang, 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 bang. And it was, oh, the, 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 the insurance company, because <laughs> we're shouting at the top of our lungs. <clears throat> At four o'clock, you know, you go out the back door and it's like Bugs Bunny and the two dogs and shit. Good night, Ralph. Good night, Harry. No one says a word. No one says a word. So anyway, we try to buy this. The city doesn't want to lose it for a tax base. They won't let it go. So, so the next thing you know, it's over. They slam us. The building's a bit too big. It had to be renovated because it was too big for assembly use. They wouldn't give us a building permit, and we were absolutely stymied by the fall of 88. <clears throat> and so we were stuck in this little tiny mousetrap downtown with 1,000 people, pretty much, or 800. And that went on for years. And finally, you know, we were going to quit. I wanted to go to Argentina to find a revival because I'm so sick of this. Can't stand it. Stuck. <laughs> And uh, suddenly, <clears throat> I don't know what happened, but the, bill, the, the college had rented it. They moved out. And so uh, I, I said, we prayed, and I said, what if we go after it again? And every single elder said, no, 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 no. They'd had four years of this waiting around. <clears throat> That's an entire story in itself. Anyway, that was the prophecy that came, and the Lord said, go. And... Um, there was huge, huge obstacles. We had to sell this land. We had this and that. And that. But we eventually got here, and that was the prophecy that was given there. And when we came, just before we, we took an offering, we raised uh, a commitment of $400,000 uh, on a pre. Uh, you know, we're, we're mostly, you know, we're 20s and 30s. And um, we came in in October, Thanksgiving, 1993. And... Give, that was our that was our Sunday, and Stacy and I happened to be in Toronto at the time. And uh, you, John or not, I'd gone to the summer camp, and he said I, I, I put in those cassettes, but not built with music. And he goes, "What is that?" I said, "Oh, that's them shaking and blowing." He goes, "What?" I said, "They're shaking and blowing." He says, "You like that?" I said, "I love it." <clears throat> He says, well, could they do it here? I said, do it here. They do it every single day. Every time they get together. Just <clears throat> so he says, well, bring them here. Bring them here. So tell them what happened. You went up on right. Because this leads to the outpouring, which leads to the nations. So this was seven years before uh, we, we, we had this. But in the October before 1994, uh, a few of us went out to speak at another vineyard church. We were by then a vineyard church. And we went to speak in Barrie, uh, um, uh, Ontario. But John Arnott brought his entire leadership team. He had a church of 250 people. We were actually the largest vineyard in Canada at the time. Uh, right? We were bigger than Langley Vineyard even. And uh, we uh, had uh, stopped there with a small prophetic team. And the Lord just came on me. John Arnott brought his entire leadership team. And maybe, what, 10 people? 8, 10 people? Yeah. Yeah, their leadership team, 20, oh, 20, 25 of them. And we were eight. And uh, uh, the first thing the Lord came on me, I just began to windmill. And I said, like I was just, because the spirit would come on us. And just like in Acts 2, they were physically overcome. But wherever you see God speaking, there's sound waves. It actually is a wave motion. I, I mean, I, yeah, and, and I was running on the spot and, and, and moving, like, you know, like, there's always movement when God begins to talk. And, and, um, and I said, you are a father. You are a father, John, or not. And Wesley said louder, you are a father. You are a father, John, or not. Windmilling and shaking and moving and twirling and all that stuff going on. And, and began to prophesy about an outpouring of the Spirit that would come that would be so big. I said, the danger in that day would be to focus on the manifestations and forget. Uh, it was like when Jesus sent the 72 out and he said, I saw, uh, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. 
And the danger in that day would be to focus on the manifestations and forget that people's names were being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And through Toronto, there were millions of people that came into the kingdom of God. I mean, it's missions movements. Heidi Baker went there. Everything in Mozambique. I was on her board for 15 years or 20 years. And uh, I mean, Reading started out of that. Uh, 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 houses of Prayer started around the world out of that. All the, the whole Revival Alliance started out of that. But there were millions of people brought into the kingdom from that. And, and that was the purpose. When you're filled with power, go wait till you receive power and you will be my witnesses. And what? So, so John or John or not would phone me every single night because Toronto is three hours ahead. They'd be one in the morning, two in the morning. Well, the first night he phoned me, he goes, Wesley, Wesley, where are you, Wesley? I said, I'm in bed. What do you think? <clears throat> he says, it's all true. It all happened. I said, what happened? What's true? He said, the prophecy, you know, fireballs coming from our hands. Stage the, he says, it's happened. The Holy Spirit has fallen. I said, Really? He said, yeah, here's Randy Clark. Hello, Wes. How are you? This is Randy from St. Louis. And so he says, you got to get out here. I says, well, what do you mean I got to get out there? No, you got to come. You got to see it. I said, I can't. We just got this big building. It's, you know, millions of dollars and we got work to do. He said, oh, no, no, no. You got to get out here. So it's February. Three weeks later, Stacy and I, we get out there with a team. He sends us out on circuit riding satellite groups where everybody's prophesying. Thousands that go to the, uh, the, you know, the big crown hotel ballroom and thousands. And it's just unbelievable. People are in the elevators. <clears throat> so we're having, you know, every, meetings are on in the morning and everybody's, oh, and, and now we're in the restaurants and there's this elevator right in the center of the restaurant. <clears throat> and all the... <clears throat> It was a glass elevator, and all the people are, oh, 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 and, they, and they come, and they go, they fall in a crowd in the elevator. The elevator goes all the way up to the 18th floor, or 20, whatever, and no one gets out. Oh, 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 oh. And then they come all the way back down. The doors open, and more people come in, oh, oh, and they get hit, and they go all the way back up to 20 floors, and they come all the way back down. And then they're laughing, and then they fall out of the elevator. Now all the waiters and waitresses are, <clears throat> they're laughing. Now they're getting filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the whole hundreds of people. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so the, the Spirit, so we start going. So I came back and I said, oh dear. Because I had uh, taken a course in history, church history, and Simon the Stylite was one of the desert fathers, and he built a pillar, the pillar saints, and he went up like 50, 60 feet in the air, and they would sit up there for 39 years and not come down. People would bring him food. He would have the Holy Spirit fall on him. He would prophesy on kings and leaders and everything, and I said to the Lord, before we got this, I says, if you get this building, I'll go up on a pillar for 40 days and fast and pray and not come down. <laughs> And I said, now I got about four, five, four kids. I said, Stacy, I think I got to go up on the pillar. He said, what? Like, really? I said, yeah. 40 nights? I said, okay, maybe we'll cut it back to 21. She says, okay, you can go up there for 21 days. I said, okay. So I tell the, the, the elders, the pastors, I says, I, st I promised the Lord that if he got this building, we'd go, up, we'd build a tower, we'd go up 21 days of prayer and fasting, and we'd have meetings. That's the only time I come down. We'd have meetings every night. <clears throat> and uh, they says, you're going to go up the pole? I said, yeah. They said, no, 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 you're not. I said, yes, I am. They said, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. I'm going up the pole. You're going to build a scaffold tower right there, right by the sign, right next to the sign. On the main highway with a big, big sign, pray until something happens. They said, but no, they said, no, no. I said, I, I don't care what you say. I'm doing it. Well, then he said, well, then you can't do it alone. We got to take turns because it's not just about you. I said, 
Get your own idea. Get your own poll. You didn't read about the pillar saints. But I knew for unity's sake, I said, all right, well, I get the best three hours of every day. So I picked all my slots. They picked their slots. And then we had other people pick slots. And then we planned 21 nights of meetings right here. This is 1994. This is June. And it looks just like this. Pretty, pretty, yeah, it's, like, it's just like this. And so uh, we start going up there. Now, word gets out. There's a crazy bunch in Kelowna. It goes all the way down to California. Dinu Steve, Steve, whatever his Whitmer. name. Whit Dinuva, Whitmer. They come up, and people are being convicted. They just drive by the pole, and they're just, oh. So, <clears throat> 90 means I'll get that. So, and so pastors would come, Wesley, what are you doing up on the pole? I says, oh, come on up. They'd come up, and the Holy Spirit would just come, bang, and hit these guys. I mean, very conservative pastors would just, oh, but the morning, we were, the morning I was telling the vision, we had these windows all open, and so I had it wrapped with blue tarp, and we had a porta potty on the third rung. We had a porta potty on the third rung, and so on the top was a great big platform. I had chairs and everything, Bibles, and so I'm preaching, and this is like June, and a great big windstorm comes up. And I'm just going, the Lord says we're going to see revival and revival will pour out all over this place. And all of a sudden, all the people sitting there going. And I can't get their attention. I said, hey, and the Lord says. And suddenly, you know, like the wind is picking up four stories of scaffolding like a box kite. And it's literally lifting off the ground. Murray Schwab and a few others come running out through the door. They got hunting knives and they start cutting the blue tarp just before the thing blew over in a whole bunch of cars. That would have been a phenomenal way to start a fast. <clears throat> Church scaffolding blows on cars, wounds 10 parishioners. I mean, <clears throat> so we got that taken care of. So we started the meetings. <clears throat> now the meetings, KCC joins us, uh, David Kalman. They shut their school down. They come in here. Now there's like 1,000, 1,200 or more people just, just packed here. Every single night we have and speakers and, and the Holy Spirit would come in swaths. The chairs would, I mean, like probably 150 in a, in a circle would just be hit by the power of God. I mean, children, men, women, <clears throat> falling down, being empowered. And this was 1994. It was just whoosh. The Christian school from Heritage came over here. The Holy Spirit, they were taking their kids out under the power of the Spirit, putting them in cars. They were unresponsive, putting them in bed, still shaking in bed. School was shut down. All the kids went through revival. <clears throat> and it was just incredible incredible <clears throat> almost done with this so this went on for like three weeks or more kept the meetings going suddenly i get a phone call hello wesley this is john wimber uh i understand there's a pastor a vineyard pastor in canada that's going up a pole and he won't come down till revival comes do you know anything about this i said <laughs> Oh, now John Wimber's like the heavyweight apostle of the world of signs and wonders. <clears throat> so I go, I said, oh, no, no, no. I've already come down. Revival's already come. <clears throat> See, there it is. It's gone off. <laughs> so <clears throat> um, he says, and I tell him the story, and then he finally goes, he says, okay. He says, I, I expected good things of you. He says, I'd like, I'd like you to come and we're going to have the Toronto Blessing come to Anaheim Vineyard and we want to, you know, spread it to the world. I said, he says, I know it's short notice, but can you come like uh, July 28th? I said, uh, no problem. Nothing on the books. I mean, I never went anywhere. We didn't get off the farm. <laughs> so I said, I went back to Stacy. I said, we're going on an apostolic mission. Come on, Gord. Get Gord White and his wife. <clears throat> All the you know, the, the, the target practice, shaking prophets, those that see with their eyes. And I mean, we all went down, drove down, and uh, 
Stacy exploded on the stage. That was August 1st or so. This massive word. Uh, oh, yeah, and there's 5,000 in the crowd. <clears throat> and the next thing you know, the, the wind of God, she was on the stage. David Roos was at the keyboards. Oh, <laughs> I forget what he was singing, but it was awesome. And um, <clears throat> so she explodes like a mattress factory. Hair, arms. <clears throat> <clears throat> and, uh, and this roar, this roar goes through the place so loud, so loud. I thought a, I thought a fight had broken out. Like literally, it sounded like a riot fight. And I was looking, and it was so loud, Stacy just, nobody was touching anybody. And John Wimber like, takes his glasses and goes, he looks in the back, <clears throat> and Stacy stops prophesying because it's like thunder in the room. And I said, no, 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 don't stop, keep going, keep going, it's okay. And the spear went, Whoa! 5,000 people, guys tell me, they were throwing three rows forward in chairs, like literally pe 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 propelled out of their chair. God fell like power Thursday morning or Friday morning, <clears throat> and uh, it was incredible. John Wimber came and he says, wow. He says, the Lord showed me you have no selfish ambition. He says to Stacy, would you pray for my children? And then we did that for many, many hours. And the point of all that is to say the prophecies about here, went to Toronto, went to Anaheim, began to go to the world. We began to travel to 50, 60. Go ahead, praise the Lord. <clears throat> and in time, there was, you know, we were going to 50, 70 conferences a year, running a church. Our teams were going all over the world, and the flags and the missions. And uh, yeah, that's the story. The so the foundations were holy from the Holy Spirit. I have the most superfluous job here. <laughs> I just want to keep them going. So uh, briefly talk about 94, Repentance Weekend. 98, 98, sorry. What, what, what happened in, in 98? Well, that was 88. 88? Yeah. 88, right. That was 88, February, uh, Valentine's weekend, 12th to 14th. And uh, 14th was a Sunday. And the Lord said, uh, he said this, he said, we were scared because if this got out, Baptists, we would, you know, everybody would run away. And so it just, it was just like 20 people or so. And so, uh, then the Lord said, take me out of the back room. We went, oh, no. God wants out of the back room. What are we going to do? And, uh, but Lord, you'll ruin the church. <laughs> they can't take it. So we're in the blue room again. And, and uh, we said, what are we going to do? No one knows what to do. So we just go in at 7 o'clock, go in. David Roos is on the keyboard. I'm not singing. <laughs> and he's just, and suddenly he's just, and he's singing whatever. And then he goes, bam, 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 on the board like this. And he goes, huh. and he jumps up and he goes, huh, and he starts prophesying. And then he goes, on your face, whoosh. Hundreds of people just whoosh. Greg Semenek, he runs from the back, ah, and he's right down there. And so I repent of this. And everybody's repenting of every single thing they can repent of because they know it's going to come out in the mail. <laughs> so, so now they're going, and they form like a little train. It's like 10 of these guys all behind each other, just going, marching through the, th and prophesying, just prophesying oracles out loud, oracles. And there's 10 of them all going like this. And I'm kind of like the leader, but I don't know what to do. And all of a sudden I feel this tug on my leg. And the guy goes, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> 
didn't I get up? I said, yeah, go, 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 go. <laughs> well, no one's looking. So the, that's when it gets out. That's when it gets out. And uh, next thing we know, that's when we go into the eight months. We just have meetings, prayer meetings every single night for eight months, every single day. And then about 75 shaking prophets are birthed in that time. So the, the connection I want to just quickly try to pull together and then Art and Brent can start to add some commentary in the present. But that was in 88. You have, you just shared how this impacted Toronto, the, the entire vineyard movement spread years later. But that moment happened on the anniversary 40 years after the latter rain outpouring, yeah. February 12th, exactly. 1948, exactly 40 years later. Mm -hmm. So you have these revival movements in Canada. You experience something here 40 years after Battleford. And then that led to the prophetic uh, impetus for John Arnott in Toronto, then the Vineyard. And we're seeing this, this, this thing that's really big, 500 prophecies about this place, is what, 500 dreams, 500 prophecies? Prophetic yeah. Prophetic words, go Stacy. Yeah, but, but the point of it was before we got, like this building is a down payment. And the contention over it, I think, is, is similar because to remove the foundation and to edit the history and, you know, over time, I, I would say they're trying to turn it to a park instead of an ark, like instead of an apostolic resource center, they're trying to turn it to a pastoral resource center. And the Bible says that the apostles and prophets are the foundation of the church. But this was birthed as an eagle's nest. Like the, long before Bob Jones came and said this is one of the three eagle's nests, uh, one of them being Bethel, which is flourishing, this was birthed as an eagle's nest to house prophets under an apostolic covering. And he said, but for the, before that he said, we will go to many nations of the world in fulfillment of his promises. And God is after the whole world. And that's why he puts apostolic prophetic foundations and then adds to them uh, uh, first apostles, second prophets, uh, uh, then evangelists, pastors, and teachers come, you know, but. But Ephesians 2.20 says, apostles and prophets are the foundation of the church. But God himself set this up. And this is meant to be an eagle's nest. And I love that, you know, that you, you understand that so clearly. You've got eagles everywhere. The eagle that's out in the foyer. The eagle that you had this morning. The eagle over the door. And we actually had the eagle as our logo even for the National Prophetic Council that I started, you know, from this place, birthed in many provinces of the world, Art ran, Art and Brent ran the prophetic, we had an eagle on our sign, yeah, so I, I, I want us, if we, I want us to clearly understand God's foundation from this place, because that's what we build upon, you know, and the, just like the new covenant is built on the old covenant, if you remove the old covenant, the Old Testament, you, you, you have a faulty foundation. It's, it, we have to go in, in the flow of what God himself has established. So let's, let's, let's fast forward because now you're describing uh, all these pieces that are foundational. And the original vision was a church. The mission statement was to have a mission church. A mission sending church, which we didn't know language. We were Baptists. We didn't know, understand apostle, primary basic meaning in the Greek is sent one. It's actually a sending station. It was built to send missionaries, evangelists into the nations of the world to the poor of the earth, actually. Yeah. So if angels are having a conversation about this place, 200 angels or 200 years ago or whatever, 200 years ago, and this is the place and, and there's that sense of sovereign purpose. And then you guys are stepping into that, and it's literal family inheritance. Yeah. And your story. It's about inheritance. God cares. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. You know, he actually cares about inheritance. And your, you, your first job was to clear the stones. 
which becomes kind of a fitting metaphor of the decades to come, right? Right. Isaiah 40, the clearing the path for the glory of the Lord to land and and the, the, the idea of a sovereign purpose means it's gonna be contested ground. And the, the higher the purpose, the greater the contest. And so, to whatever degree you guys want, just briefly describe some of the challenges that, that brought you, you know, to places of great sorrow, continuing to clear the path. How do you carry the vision? What part of the vision do you give up? We don't have to spend a lot of time on that, but yeah. Well, I just think Jesus himself said, blessed are you when all men speak all manner of evil against you falsely. And you know, all the things they say, for so persecuted they the prophets who were of old. And so I think in our journey to be conformed to the image of Jesus, if they did it to the head, and they did it to his disciples. They'll do it to you. <laughs> They'll do it to me. And particularly, prophetic history is most contested. Uh, so much so that even in the New Testament, it says, you know, don't despise prophetic utterances. Because in the wait from the word to the fulfillment of the promise, many people fall away. Stop believing. Uh, don't wage war with the prophecies that were given them with the laying on of hands. And so, and the disillusionment, uh, the faith that the prophetic brings, you know, there's a corollary disillusionment and despising when it doesn't happen in the time frame or the way that we want it to happen or think it will. But look at the life of Joseph, up, down, up, down. Look at the life of Daniel, up, down, up, down. Look at the life of Moses, you know, 40 years in the wilderness. And many people grumbled. Only two people actually made it into the land. Two of the original. And so I want to say you guys are amazing because yeah. many of you actually were here in the early days and you're still here and you're back here. But there's more than two of you. So God bless you. So uh, this, the simple answer <clears throat> is that, you know, the blessing was so great, it was hard to contain. And we were going everywhere. And those that didn't get to go everywhere, you know, we're taking care of the farm. And soon there's a tension between, you know, like the apostolic and the, and the pastoral. Like, why do you get to, uh, and uh, before long, it's like, you know, what are we, what, what are we paying you for? You know, in other words, they just wanted us to be home. Right. And not just us, but the others. And, and, uh, but there was a driving force of wind that, you know, I remember saying when the uh, 88, 1988 portion dialed down, eventually by 90, I mean, it, it was flat. Here, 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 here was flat. And I remember saying, God, if you ever do that again, if you ever is it like that again? I will run the height, the breadth, the width of the world and find as many pots as I can, pots to pour the oil in. Because it said, that, you know, <clears throat> take all the pots you can and turn, pour the oil. And, <clears throat> and then the lady said, hand me another pot. Right. He says, mother, there are no more. The oil stopped flowing. And I said, I will run the whole world. And so we did. I mean, we took off in 95 for a, a sabbatical. Ha <laughs> ha, sabbatical. It was planned before the outpouring of 94. And uh, we went three months with five children, the uh, seven and under, seven and under, five children, seven and under, homeschooling, two-week-old Vashti, down the I-5, nightly meetings. Stacy, <laughs> in the back, <laughs> breastfeeding. <laughs> Go to the hotel, boys jumping on the bed. She goes in the morning, I take the boys. And it was just down the I-5, night after night, this, this, it was breaking out. Che goes, will you come? I said, yeah. We go there, Lou, 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 Lou Che. Yeah. And I said to them, I said, we went out for Chinese food. He says, guys, what you gotta do is call a 21 day fast. You call a fast. 
And then you call nightly meetings. And Lou goes, yeah, really? I says, if you don't, someone else will. I said, the first one up the hill gets the command. And Lou goes, all right, <clears throat> sounds good to me. <clears throat> <laughs> so they called 21 nights of meetings in uh, Mon Auditorium. That led to two and a half years of nightly meetings. Two and a half years. And they were lit up California. <clears throat> and it just went on and on. And, and so the, the point was, we couldn't stop. We couldn't stop. <clears throat> oh, there's too many, there's too many miraculous stories. <clears throat> but the tension was the pastoral, and the, apost the apostolic and the pastoral, that was the tension. And in time, and one other one piece that was very sad, happened in the vineyard. John, Ar John Wimber got so much flack for this that by December of 1995, which was only a couple years in, uh, it was only a couple years in, they, um, they asked us to leave the vineyard, Toronto Airport Vineyard to leave, Randy Clark to leave, and Che and Lou to leave all in one week. And so, um, you know, the tension, because he was getting so much pressure, he was under heavy um, you know, sickness at the time as well. So the, the things were straining everywhere. And I would say that, um, you know, we just desired to bring it to the nations, mostly. That's what was our call and the tension here. So finally, you know, the end result is <clears throat> the local leaders wanted to lead it. Yeah. And we were just too visible yeah. and there was tension you know, because we were pulling it always to the world, to the nations. They were always like, <clears throat> you know, the Sunday school room's not full. We don't have enough teachers. Blah, blah, blah. And the tensions, you know, it's the flocks, the herdsmen of Abram, the herdsmen of Lot. And finally, they just said, you know what? Wesley and Stacy, you just go do the whole world thing. We'll do this. And Cindy Jacob says, Wesley and Stacy, do not do that. If you do that, They'll just say, well, they resigned. You say, no. And so we said, no. Well, you have to. I said, no. It is on my chin. Totally on my chin. Look. It's on my nose. <laughs> so um, what happened is they said, okay, well, then you're fired. And we were actually fired in 2006, and that was the first tension. Wow. So... I don't want to too quickly move on from that because that's a sober kind of thought. It, it's part of the history of the place, though, and there's certainly lessons to glean. Like, there's a future panel to just have the conversation. Yeah. How does the apostolic and prophetic keep pushing forward yeah. and maintain healthy dynamics with those who tend to the house? And, and because whatever God is going to do next is going to have the same sort of messy dynamics. And we got to figure this out. So this is, I mean, th th what has happened here is a template of what can go right, what can go wrong, and the lessons to learn from that are likewise instructive for the body of Christ. Uh, so relational dynamics, political church dynamics, uh, all those things. But Brent, you, you kept coming. Art shared stories last night. I'm gonna get to a question for him, but you kept coming on these key moments, sitting in the back, trying to hide, doing whatever. Why were you so invested in this place? What did you see that made you stay connected that way? First of all, when we listen to mothers and fathers telling a story, the history, the generals, the history, when... That was... It was yeah. When we sit, when we get to listen to mothers and fathers that are generals telling the history of revival and what it went through, it's absolutely a mandatory we take note. We must not let these opportunities fall away. The parallels in I, I'm mind boggled, um, just briefly, these Bogota people, these guys that came, I'm born in Bogota as a missionary kid. 
like just how do these parallels happen? You know, my mom, as I said last night, went to the seminary, the Baptist seminary that Wesley and Wesley went to and Stacy and I went to. I traveled with David Roos and Anita, and Wesley was my dorm parent. You know, so it, it, it. And how does this happen that there can be so much connection over so many years that weren't planned? And I, the building that we own, our main center, was actually where the very first vineyard birthed out of. So Gary Bess and his team actually birthed out of the building that we now own for the very first vineyard of Canada. You put these things together and you need to listen and realize there are men and women that risked everything to go forward. They risked everything. I remember seeing this lady doing what she was doing. And even though I was charismatic at the time, I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure. But somehow or another, something transformed and started to transform nations from this place right here. I remember coming up here even in the late 90s, just visiting. I sat at the back, didn't say nothing but literally got more connected in the 2000s. But in the meantime, it's interesting because what happens here affects Toronto, affects Bethel. In the late 90s, I'm now involved with Bethel. And so I'm involved with Bethel heavily and still am. And so we're having an outpouring down there as well too. We're seeing the manifestations of what God is doing. But yet something started here in Kelowna, British Columbia. It's absolutely incredible. I think some of the tensions that happen with apostolic prophetic and the local church is when we have leadership teams that, that don't grasp the fullness of a five-fold ministry. And, and what, we, what we started doing, because I went to the same seminary, what happens is you birth out as a pastor. But the reality of it is, is, the shepherding heart is part of the home base, but that needs to be apostolic centers. And the apostolic center model is family-based model where, where, where it functions and all five function and work together in unity. And so the local isn't upset when the international is on fire. The local is actually still pouring into the fire that's happening internationally, and the international is start bringing fire to the local, and it becomes a model. The problem is, I really truly believe is, is the local church started to be more self-serving than it was the mandate of Christ Jesus. And I think to learn from these testimonies, to learn from the stories of why, for Art and Heather to be back in this building, re-grabbing and digging and opening up this well again, is literally a mandate of the Lord that was destined to happen. And it took someone bold enough to believe it and go after it. And we've run together many years. We've had our ups, we've had our downs, we, but we run together, we stay together because God has a purpose for the relationships that he has on earth that are ready now. And, and that's what we have to look at. So I look at the model, what the stories we just heard, I mean, it's gotta be a book, but the stories that we just heard, like, are we ready to be that crazy? Like, 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 I, and it's easy to say yes, but I'm talking a lifestyle. Right. You know, are we ready to go after it? We started, we founded our own ministry. We have over 100 churches around the world. We were nuts. We got our own stories. We were crazy. People said, you guys are nuts. You're full, foolish to do this. You know, go, what are you guys doing that for? What about your kids? What about this? What about that? And I want to tell you, that when we honor what the generals, the mothers and the fathers have done before, there's a reopening of God's presence. And it's li literally this morning, I woke up early. I, I went to bed, at, it must have been after two o'clock in the morning. And I, I, I'm awake at 5.35 this morning and I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, I need to sleep. I'm tired. And I, I had an encounter again and I had it last fall and I had it again. And this massive supernatural angelic being showed up. And it's exactly like Joshua 5. Are you for us or are you against us? And he said, neither. 
And I want to believe right now, today, right now, I want to believe that, that God's presence is in this place for a reason that goes beyond any one of us sitting here. And if we can get out of our minds, it's not about me, it's not about you, it's not it's like Stacy said already, it's not about her, it's about the calling and the mandate that God has on a place. Uh, and we have to be willing to go after it, we have to be willing to lose friends for it, we have to be willing to lose family members for it if that's what it takes. But we need to have the boldness and the fire or we won't see what God wants in this house. Okay, in case you don't know it, um, lunch break has been delayed. <laughs> so we're just gonna, we're, we're gonna stick with this for a little bit longer, but I wanna, I wanna pull Art in. Art, 2014, you have a vision. Talk about that. No, it wasn't a vision, it was a dream. A dream. Um, the dream was uh, in February 2014, 10 years ago, um, I was uh, just about to lead worship for an Eyes and Wings cruise, tough gig. Um, and we were, uh, me and Heather landed in uh, Miami, and uh, we always like to pray over the hotel room. So we prayed over the hotel room. I said, and while I'm at it, Lord, you know, sending your angels to look after us. Uh, if you want to give me a dream, I would love it. The next day, we get onto the, uh, I have a dream that night, get onto the cruise, I tell everyone, but the, the dream was, um, and by the way, just, uh, I have to set it up by, with this saying, you know, my life was changed back there. And, and Well, we visited in 96. You guys weren't here at the time. You're around the world. Um, we visited in 96. I'm like, what is this? What is this? And, uh, but we were living in Vancouver. We ended up moving in 97 to Kidmet. Didn't come back here um, until uh, 2002, brought youth. I think it was 2002 for Avalanche, and I met the Lord powerfully back there. And then we would come 004, 05, 06, and all those things. And um, because your life has changed in a place like this, and uh, we, I, I had met the, uh, heard the vision, just even just being called an eagle's nest. And we would come down here three times a year just to step in and to get a word and to just want to go home. It's just like, hey, we got it. We would just meet God here all the time and um, became, just loved Wesley and Stacy. They ended up coming to Kitimat in 06. And, um, and um, uh, first time that I stepped on the stage in 05, uh, just over here, actually, um, and because we had really met Wesley and Stacy in 04, Met Kirk here when he was prophesying over Wesley and Stacy, apostles to the nation. And just like, and, and Kirk Smith is just bellering so loud. I'm like, oh, well, it's, oh well, this man has authority. Meeting, meeting all these people, Mark, Rizba, and all these ones meeting here on the stage. Stacy comes up to me in 05, just had kind of just been getting to know her. She goes, Lord, show you anything? I said, yeah, I, I got this word. I woke up at 555 and the Lord gave me this word. And uh, she goes, oh, yeah, okay. She comes on stage. She goes, I want to call a couple people up here. Uh, Brent Borthwick and Art Lucia. I'm like, what? Was, no, didn't even know each other. So these two guys have the same word. Woke up at 555, have the same word. I'm like, oh, I step on stage. Because of, of my dream, I have to set this up. I step on stage, and out through the stage, shoots a tree through the roof. Big birch tree. Like one of those, not a, not a spruce tree. And up there, and there's a nest up there. And I, like, I'm looking at you, but I see a, like, um, I see a, a tree. And just like, I'm looking, and it's like, what? With my eyes open, open vision. You know, and I'm just like, wow, wow. And, and, and we unload a whole bunch of stuff of eagles, so on and so forth, okay. Um, but in 2014, and I was just so, and I was so struck pierced, not even knowing, I, Wesley, you sent that letter of all the history, which we, you know, we would take three hours to go into the war of even getting Main Street. I'm going to send it, is, can I send it out? We're going to send it to everyone. It's in, it's in, it's 16 pages. 
And we blew through it all this morning. It was just like, oh my gosh. It was like, I learned stuff anyway. Um, you know, of, of, of just the war. The, the price that has been paid and others and just like raising 400 grand back 30 years ago and all of this, you, you gave your RSPs space, everything. You never took, you didn't take a wage in 30 years. Like this is ridiculous. I read this article, this letter, I'm like, it's like holy ground of the sacrifice of God's people. I'm like, I don't know if I want this. But now I got it. It's like, what, what have I done? I'm like, look, look at this. This is like, this is like, you can't, it's like, uh. and in 05, we kicked up the house of prayer on January 3rd, prayed every single Tuesday for Kitimat and Kelowna. Kitimat, Kelowna, Kitimat, Kelowna. And people are like, so yeah, you're playing, praying for the Eagles and some Canada lots. I'm like, I can't, I'm burdened. And you know, seeing this tree and so on and so forth and so much happened up until this point. Have a dream. In the dream, me and Heather are walking. Uh, it's now 2014. Sorry, 2014. I saw the tree. What about that tree? Yeah, finish well, finish no. the vision of the tree. Well, no, I just saw an eagle's nest of a tree. That's all I saw okay. in, in OSEC. Well, eagle's nest, a massive one, just like I'm like, I'm having a, like, can anyone else see this? But then on a separate encounter, you stepped on stage well, and saw another tree. Tell, about that? tell that one. People don't care about eating. You don't care about eating? We're just going to be, what we're going to do, whatever time we stop, we're delaying one hour till the school. That's all there's to it. Just like, and we'll just, because Mark Brisbane's gonna be here, Sean, we're going to, okay. So um, um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna set this up then too. So I get to know Wesley and Stacy. They come at the end of June of 06 to come fishing. And we went, and it was just like, and we just built some relationship. I had, I finally had parents. We had no parents because we had, we, God says no, denomin no denominational set. We planted our church, 03. They come. And I get to know that, and just like, they leave. July 4th, on a Tuesday, house of prayer, my shift, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. for three hours. I'm in the house of prayer, and, and, and I, I fall asleep. Me and Kevin, I fall asleep, and I have a dream. And in the dream, like someone that looks like Jesus walks up to me in my dream and says, you're gonna help Wesley get his Jerusalem back. That's actually what was said. And I'm just like, he walks away, and I wake up out of my dream, ecstatic prophecy. I'm just freaking out for five minutes. There's an apostolic prophetic company going to come back into the glory and get, help get Wesley's Jerusalem back. Blah. I'm just like, for five minutes, and I'm just like, and then I calm down. I'm like, what the heck am I talking about? What's, what, what, what is that? And I look, and Kevin Fifi, who's going to be here tonight, is crying against the wall. He's crying. I look, hey, buddy, what's going on? He goes, well, man, you were f snoring. And he fell asleep, and uh, he goes back there, and the door, it opened. And I heard footsteps. The door opened back there, and footsteps walked up to you, walked out, and the door closed. I'm like, what? I had a dream that I, someone like Jesus, like or an angel, walked up to me, and he's like freaking out. He goes, well, I felt him, whoever it was. And so I'm like, what? That was July 4th, July 9th, 06, I'm here. And we were on a tour to go see Fatine, the cry. 23 of us, three vehicles, driving to Ottawa with children and no money. Don't suggest you try that. Stop here. Lead worship. Honored. You know, lead worship. Me and Wesley go for a walk on the beach after that. July 9th, 06. And I tell him about... I said, there's an apostolic prophetic company going to come back into Cologne and you're going to help back your Jerusalem. He goes, oh, well, you know, Jerusalem, I understand. It's like his inheritance, you know, and just like Jerusalem, a special place. I believe this is too. And just like, but then I start to prophesy. And I said, Wesley, you're going to resign your eldership. And God's going to deal with the hearts here, people, because this is a sovereign thing. And Wesley's just like, if I resign my eldership, I could just never get it back. And then I saw, I said, something bad's coming. And I said, just, just so you know, and just like, Four weeks later to the day, Wesley calls me. They kicked us out. I said, but that's okay. And, and Wesley's like, what do you mean it's okay? 
Oh, don't you remember? I had a, there's an apostolic prophetic company coming back in. They're going to help get both story of Jerusalem. And, and I was broken because my spiritual father is crying. On the phone. And just like, so we just continued to pray. Oh, six. You know, they're gone for like five years. Wouldn't even, couldn't even come back in. And then they're at KCC. And like they, and David Kellerman, God bless him, right? He, he brings you. Oh, my gosh. And we're all over there causing chaos for them. And just like, it's just a gong show. And just like, you know, and there's two tribes coming together. And one's really loud. Anyway, so we just go we're over there. And Wesley does, Wesley and Stacy do a Young Reformers Conference. This is like, I don't know. Uh, it, it's 09. I, thought, I think it was October, September. And, and, and Sunday, when I drove into the city with, in my bus, I'm driving. The Lord says, Sunday morning, you're going to go to New Life. And you're just going to go sit in the middle with your youth and just sit there. I'm like, oh, okay. And just like, so I come Sunday morning, sit here, and I just want to be inconspicuous because, you know, these are my spiritual parents and there was stuff. Now, listen, I'm going to say something. This is not a slight on any man or woman. There's spirits at work that don't like uh, what God does. And they just looks for, just for hurt, broken, this or that, people or the best of people can get sometimes used. And just like, so we're there and I'm just trying to ignore it. And, and uh, a, a big, tall prophet of the house walks over. He goes, hey, what are you doing here? I said, uh, uh, God, God said to just sit here. I'm just, I don't want to be noticed. I just, I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. You know, I'm just going to sit here and just like, I just got my head down just like, and this prophet walks up to the front to the leadership and starts to talk to them. I'm like, what, what, what's, what's he doing? Just like, they get up and look over at me. I'm like, oh. I'm just like, what? what? What is going on? And they come out, and, and then worship starts, comes over, and they said, hi. What you doing here? He said, oh, I was just coming to pray for the eagles. I said, I always pray for the eagles. Yes. And I just started talking about the prophecy, just like they're like, do you want to pray for us? Do you want to get up and pray for us? Now, I look back, too, and, 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 um, in 05, I meet this guy here. I look back. This is 09. He's at the back. He's at the back. I'm like, what's going on? He drove. He woke up, you know, and the Lord wakes him up. He wakes up, 555, comes here. The Lord says, go here. Go here. Sit down here. I'm just like, what's going on? So uh, this lady stops the worship service. I'm trying to not even be, I don't want, like, I'm, I'm uncomfortable the best of times to some people. And this is one of those times. And uh, they stop the service and they go, will you pray for us? Just like, I go up those stairs. I step on stage. What happens? I step on the stage. Boom, a big tree shoots up through the roof. Again, four years later, I've forgotten about it. Because you can't, you know, it's just like, it's there and I can see it. I'm lost. I, she had told me, just come up and pray for us. I'm lost. I boom, and, and I look and a, and a big python, two of them start to go up the tree after the nest. I'm like, they're gonna go after, the, they're going after the nest. And I see two big machetes come out of the air, whack, right below the head, stick in the tree. The bodies fall down, the heads roll down, and I start to prophesy. There's two snakes going up after the nest, and there's two are down, and there's still one to go. <laughs> and this lady that asked me to pray for everyone is grabbing my back, and I hear, we asked you to pray. Right, right. Step here. I'm overcome, like, what do you do? And there's a moment, and people are like, eyes are big, and just like, what's going on? Who's the psycho that just sees, like, a big tree? And just like, so I just pray. I like, it's too late. Anyway, might as well just pray it. Boom, everyone's crying, right? Everyone's just messed up, and boom, boom, boom. You go up to the front. I didn't know this. You go up there to the leaders and say, uh, I see a lineup. The party's coming back. There's a lineup going on. It's just like, you know, and there's, there's, you know, no party at the time. I'll just say it like that. Okay. It's just like, there was no party at the time. And I sit down. Everyone's crying so much for, you know, just like not being inconspicuous. And the Lord says, now get up and go to the front. Go up the front and tell them the party's coming. I didn't know what, that, you know, he's here. And, and by the way, that prophet went to the front earlier when he looked at me, and he said, there's prophets in the house. What are you going to do about it? 
And they're like, you know, just like stirring, stirring trouble, <laughs> you know. But I go up and I said, hey, the party's coming back. And they said, what? The party's coming back. They said, we were just in the back room. Where's the party going? I said, well, it's coming back. Which lead, so. So now 2014. Speed up. They get back in, by the way, in 2011. Da, 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 da. There's, you know, and, uh, but things are still tense and there's still stuff. There's still stuff. And I have a dream. Me and Heather are walking from Kinemet. We're walking towards Terrace. And there's no road. We're pioneering. But I see an outcrop of rocks 100 yards up, a big, like a little hill, mountain, you might call it. But just like, and I'm just like, and I'm like, oh, there's a hill. Let's go up, Heather. We're going to see the, we can see the eel's nest from there. A dream, right? Just like, it's 400 miles, you know, by the crow flies. We go up there, and I climb to the top rock, and like over the canopy of the forest. I'm like, there it is. I can see the tree that I've seen in visions. I see a big tree in the distance, a huge tree with a huge nest, just like what God would show me. And I'm like, there it is. Look, Heather, and I'm helping her up. You know, come on, let's go. There's, there it is. Look. And when I look again, the top third of the tree, an explosion, a bomb. It takes the levels, the, the tree at the top third, the nest disintegrated, dust, feathers, everything, boom. I'm just like, the eagle's nest, I've been praying for that for how many years? It's like, it just, just blew up. Like, it's just like, and I said, and Heather says, no, look, there it is. I, what are you talking about? Look there. She goes, no, look there. I look just to the right. I'm like, that's the tree with the nest. I was like, there it is. I'm like, I'm confused. I still see dust here. I'm like, there. And Heather says, no, look. And I, that was my dream. And I said to them the next day, I, said, I had a dream. So, and then someone said, sounds like multiplication. <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, so that was my dream. It was just like, okay. So, so you, you carried that how? How did that affect your, that's 2014, 10 years ago. And, and moving forward from there, you had a prophetic word in, in 2017 that you brought to the Canadian Prophetic Council with Stacy about perils in, in, in Canada, the judgment coming, the tap being turned off. And then that led to something in 2018, 40 years after uh, the, the repentance weekend, something broke out here, 70 years after, you, you've been brought along and had that word and we're in North Battleford, 70 years after the revival. And, uh, and uh, so you've been carrying this forward, and now here we are this weekend. Like, I, I mean, we're compressing a lot over the last years into, into now, but I, I guess my question to you, Art, and, and Stacy and Wesley, to you guys, a mission-based church whose mission statement was for the nations which is not a typical church, right? That's, that's just not, that's not how churches form their mission statement. So a mission-based church to send 100 missionaries a year to 100 cities in the earth, and the flags represent the nations, and the contested ground chosen by God, the politics, the war, the battles, the eagle's nest blows up, it's connected to revival movements from the past to the present, on into the future, and even the family inheritance of a farmer's market. And as you said, Stacy, the point of a farmer's market is to bring in the harvest and export it. And so now the harvest is inheriting the story. And here you are as mothers and fathers and a spiritual son and the harvest is now repossessing the contested land. And so I'm gonna ask where I started. What do you see? Like this is, a, this is the poetry of God. This is a prophetic story. What do you see? Well, since I have the mic and I'll hand it over, I, um, and, and I know that for many of you watching, you know, in my office with eagles everywhere and eagles, even when we, 
we bought, our church bought in, uh, a movie theater, and Wesley knows about it, I've seen it. We called it Eagle Center. People are like, Art, you're a little obsessed. You're a lot obsessed. Because our, our building, Eagle Center, I put an eagle on it. In, in, in honor and respect to what God did here and, and how he touched me. It's not about weird worship for me and stuff. I just like, I was, but I was burdened. I realized it was a sovereign thing. It was sovereign to meet Wes and Stacy and for them to come and to speak into Heather and myself and to many of us in the north, all the festivals that they would always come to and so on, so on and so forth. But it was a supernatural thing to pray, to pray, to pray for this, for Bob Jones's word, for all, all that was done here, not even knowing the price for Main Street. And I, 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 I now know this. I believe personally that, you know, that the, the eagle, the, the last snake, it's over. It's over. Like, <clears throat> in 09, seeing the two, and there's one to go, Wesley and Stacy jumping in here, there was still a huge python, a, 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 like a, a snake, still going and still chasing them, you know, just dealing. But, but I believe um, that here, you know, uh, it's, it's dealt with. And just like, and we don't necessarily know all that it's going to look. The world has changed. We don't know what this place is going to look like, all that, all that stuff. But I just believe that God... God said we did it. The prayers of all the saints, uh, fasting, praying, believing. I'd basically given up. I had prayed since 05 for this place. Last year, I found myself waning for three months at a time, stopping praying. It was sold. I heard rumors tore down spring of 2024. Why bother? Blah. And just like, but here we are. And I, I just find it so sovereign at so many levels that um, I had one of the biggest, uh, I had a very profound visitation about 555. And you had a visitation where you woke up at 555, right, Art? And Brent had a visitation where he woke up at five, many, many times. Well, I was awake, I, I mean, I was... Um, instantly woken up, this was many, many years ago, at 555, but it was, it was as though someone was in the room waking me up. I went from a dead sleep to wide awake, like Wesley said, that's angels. And so I got out, I was an instantly in a spirit of prayer, so I got up and I went and said, Lord, what's the 555 about? And, I, and then my kids started getting up and I had to get them breakfast and drive them to school. So I said, I'm gonna go straight to the prayer room today because I was in this spirit of prayer. And I said, God, what's the 555? And I went to Woodfire Bakery to grab a coffee on my way to the war room, started by a prophet, Patricia King, who came to this church and helped us here, build here for many, many years. And, uh, but I, I, so I went to the uh, coffee shop. And when I got to the coffee shop, I'm saying, Lord, what is it? And I felt like the Lord said, before I got to the coffee shop, it's Isaiah 55.5. But I had no idea what Isaiah 55.5 said. So I go into the coffee shop, and this woman I've never seen before in my life comes running towards me. Young lady, she was, you know, in her 20s, I would think. And she goes, I had a dream about you. And I said, oh, really? I said, what was the dream? Well, she said, well, in the dream, I dreamt that I went to your house, and your house was filled with children. That was one of the main prophetic words over this house is the children, the children, which is why we started, you know, Hope for the Nations, Ralph Bromley and all that, and, and houses for children at risk and for the poor of the earth, for be a hero. We, you know, hope even for the city to house single moms and their children. It's like one of the biggest words that we have over the, the house. So, and she said, your house was filled with children. And she said, in the dream, uh, she said, I went to your daughter's room, and I don't even know if you have a daughter, but she said, and I began taking off my old clothes and putting on your daughter's clothes. Isn't that weird? And I instantly knew that meant that she wasn't yet a believer, but she, the, she was taking off her old garments and putting on new ones and became a daughter you know, of the house. So I, I 
it ended up, you know, setting a time to prophesy over her, and she became a believer later. But I'm thinking, boy, that's so weird. First, I wake up at 555. It's Isaiah 555. I run into this thing. This woman I've never seen before runs towards me, you know, and tells me this thing. And I go up, and I open my Bible to Isaiah 555. And it says, behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know. And a nation that did not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. And I believe that this is a calling to the nations. And you have the calling to the nations. And you have the calling to the nations. And this house has a calling to the nations. It was our house at the time filled with children, the next generation of people that are going to take it with the same DNA calling to the nations for the harvest. And I want to say that since we've left here, Gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. And I would say that Wesley is doing, you know, uh, for uh, the faith-based part of an, uh, uh, one of the biggest initiatives that we've ever done for children at risk. And I started Shiloh Global. Uh, recently, I was in a large nation and I prophesied over a senator who sent it to the former president. The former president tracked me down to prophesy over him. Uh, the mayor of a massively millions of people city got on the stage on his knees and asked me to prophesy over him. Another senator from the stage. And gifts and calling are irrevocable. And the eagle's nest that was started in this place, that is being reestablished in this place, is going to go to the nations of the earth and nations that you do not know will run to you because of the Lord your God for he himself has established this and he will glorify you. And I'm telling you, the, the, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 that the word that was given to the Israelites, this was sent to the Israelites direct from God. It was about their place. It was about their nation. And it said it did not profit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith. And if we stop believing, a, a word from God can never die. It just stops being believed. And the moment you stop believing what came from heaven and what was established over and over and over again, confirmed, not by the mouth of one or two or two or three, but by 20, 30, 50, 200, 300 times, and try to replace it, change it, like Abraham did with Ishmael, then you end up with contention. But the moment you reestablish it. So I just want to say uh, how proud I am of Art and Heather. And I will say this, that when I left this place, I, I felt, you know, from the Lord, uh, I, I was praying and I said, God, I felt... I, to shake the dust off my feet. When you are rejected, the Bible says. And so I shook the dust off my feet I, in the spirit. I actually went through a thing and a prayer and I, I did that because I felt like all the structures had gotten distorted. They were changing the prophetic intent and they were trying to change the prophetic words. Uh, you know, like they wanted and, and Saul, not David. They didn't want what the Lord himself that's not about me, but it is about me. It's not about Wesley, but it is about Wesley. It's not about art, but it is about art. Because God, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro and actually pick men and women with all our faults, with all our foibles. You can read the Bible. Every single one of them sinned, you know, either in some, one way or the other. And, uh, and so it's not about the perfection of the choice of God. It's about, you know, something that God saw and God chose and it's honestly about honoring God himself. And if we don't get that clear, we will constantly end up with Ishmael's instead of Isaac's, Saul's instead of David's, et cetera, et cetera. But I have come back, and I said, Art, I'm coming back to bless. Now, where I shook the dust off, I now bless it because 
God's vision is here. And I've come to bless Heather, and I've come to bless Art, that as God's choice, I've come to bless their, their struggle for this place. I've come to support it. I've come to bless the vision of heaven that is being reestablished for the eagle's nest this weekend, this day. And I say that the destiny is, that the history is moving into destiny, and the will of God, when believed, well, it's irrevocable. It's irrevocable. And I bless the promises, the future, the nations that will be touched, the children that will be touched, the poor of the earth that will be touched from this place under your leadership. And I just bless you as true spiritual sons and daughters that actually show honor. Amen. Amen. And come Sunday morning, this Sunday, and I will answer that question. Where is it going? Where is it going? From the most profound message of the Bible, this Sunday morning, if you're watching on live stream, you tune in on Sunday morning, what time, Art, 10.30? 10.30 for rabid worship. And uh, don't miss any of them. All these sessions that are on live stream, you can watch it Sunday morning. Where is it going? It's really taking off. Can we just stand together and give the Lord a hand for this? Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Lord. We just, uh, we just declare the nest lives. And God will have his way. God, you're going to have your way. And you're going to give us a grace to follow you. To see your kingdom come, your will be done. Your purpose is accomplished. And we just thank you, Lord, for all that you did but all that you're going to do. And that this house has the best grandparents in all the world. You know, we're, we were so tired going into this, even now. It's, this is all going to sink in later. Right? It is. Just like. Whew. So with that, though, you guys, um, we're going to make it 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. And we're going to have time. We should have did that even. I had told my staff, we made a mistake. There's no way that we're going to be done. Start at 10, done at, done at, you know, at noon to have an hour break. So. Two o'clock, and we're gonna go right till 4.30. Each of our um, incredible prophets are going to be dropped. I know Mark's gonna go first, and um, so be here at 2 p.m., you know, and... And if you wanna pay for it and you haven't, you can just go to the uh, information booth and pay for it, because it is paid. If you want it live streamed, come talk to me, thanks. Right, so those who are watching now, the schools were never part of, a, of, of, the, of the free live stream. So, you know, we, um, yeah. So, uh, see you at 2 o'clock. Go get a bite or not. Um, the, uh, the war room will be open anyway, you know. So, all right, we'll see you. See you guys at 2 p.m. All right. Can I have...